Hey everyone, Joe Carroll here. Excited to be with you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. So I have a song here that I uh, produced and um, recorded with my good friend Chase Goring. He is a pop artist here in Nashville, has had some success on, I think, maybe American Idol or The Voice or X Factor, or America's Got Talent. I'm not even sure which ones. Uh, I know he's, he's done really well and he's got a great following, a lot of fans. And um, when you hear him, you'll know why. He's, he's a fantastic artist. But there, there's a song. I um, produced a song, a couple songs for his last record a few years back, and this was one of them. And um, it's, it's a fun, acoustic-driven pop track. And I've had some requests to do some some digestible mixing tutorials. You know, it's like dive into one subject and kind of kind of break it down, uh, but not hours and hours worth of stuff like a full song. So um, we did drums a couple weeks ago, so I thought it'd be fun to pull in something that's we can deal with acoustic guitars and some synths and things like that. And, um, and talk about acoustic instruments. So um, here we go. So I, I have kind of, I pulled open that mix and not everything uh, came back. <laughs> you know, thanks to the M1 processor and all that kind of stuff. You know, there's pro, uh, there's plugins that just aren't around anymore or hardware that I don't have easy patch to. What I did is I kind of pulled up uh, the remnants of it and wiped everything, automation, panning, you, you, I mean, you name it, effects, EQs, compression, I, I, I wiped everything from the acoustic guitars and the keyboards. Just, and so all we have is drums and bass that kind of represent what we had originally. And so I thought I could just kind of build it from here in real time so you guys can follow along, okay? So let me give you a little sample of the song and remember all the guitars and everything are completely dry and raw. Well, I can't see tomorrow and I don't know where I'm going I'm just looking for my stepping stone Okay, so you can hear those little hooky things are not popping out at all. This has been a minute. This this has been a few years since I recorded this, so I'm, I'm kind of re-familiarizing myself with it. Let me play you a little bit of one of the choruses. Everybody's got some blue. And everybody's got a true. Do you take it home? So you get the vibe. So so it's obviously acoustic uh, driven, but not just acoustic, it's ukulele. So let's let's just look at the instruments that we have here and make this screen a little bit bigger. And we have ukulele. And I believe this is the this is he he recorded the song around uh, ukulele, and I think it was just kind of the it had to be part of it because that was what he wrote it on. And I, I believe he actually played the ukulele. And then we have a some wide mono acoustic guitars for stereo with. I see a bazooki track, but okay, he only plays here and there. Oh, it's okay, it's in the instrumental, so he's probably doing some kind of melodic idea. Okay. If you don't know what a bazooki is, a bazooki is kind of, just think of it as a really big uh, Middle Eastern mandolin. <laughs> kind of thing. It's, it's a lot larger and lower pitched than a mandolin, but it is eight strings. Um, and I think it may even be tuned. Uh, I can't remember if it's tuned like a guitar or tuned... Like a like a, a mandolin, but uh, anyway, nonetheless, um, that's what a bazooki is. And then we have a bunch of keyboard stuff. We have a, a an actual acoustic piano. I think it was a I think it was a sample though, but reed organ, pad, an arp. And I believe that is it. Okay, so let's just dive in. So what I've done is I've imported my most recent template and you'll see a lot of stuff is grayed out. But one thing that always comes up just ready to go is SSL stuff. So on acoustic guitars, I love the 4KE console uh, or channel strips or, or plugins <laughs> in the DAW world. I just love the tame nature of the high end. Uh, but I mean, I just love the EQ and I love the, the compressor too. The dynamic section of those things are, are money. And then on the pianos and the keyboards, you'll see 
right out of the gate is a channel strip too. So it's more like a SSL 9000. So it's full range. So the top octave and the bottom octave are a little more full and open than they are on the 4K. So for synth world where, where I want things really bright and shiny or, um, you know, big and bottom in because some kind of, some kind of massive, you know, bass things going on or something like that. I may want that. So I'm going to use the channel strip too as my starting spot. So let's just kind of, let's mute Chase's vocal and, and, and just kind of listen one more time. Okay. So now, okay. I think I have a good idea of what we need to do. So there's a lot of mud there. First of all, a lot of clarity. We need a ton of clarity. Everything's just kind of mushed together in this cloud right now, and that's just not gonna work. The panning, I think, is pretty good. The only thing I might do is move this bazooki just a little bit, but you'll see the, the ukulele's in full stereo. Okay, there is a little, so I'm hitting the mono switch here, and you, I, there is just a little bit of stereo information there. Uh, so just a touch, so we're gonna keep it that way. So um, do we do we want, let, let's do, let, let's bring in just a little bit of tape, tape compression. Thir 30 ips. Okay, now let's, let's start, let me, I'm gonna mute all the keys first. So, because the, what really is driving this song is the acoustics and the ukulele. So let's not have that cloud of, of synth parts uh, in affecting any of our decisions right now. Okay, so we need, a, we need quite a bit of brightness. In fact, I'm going to start with the, the high mids just so I can hear exactly where the pick attack shine is. Okay, and there's some there's some low end that we don't need. Uh, we're going to have plenty of low end in the keyboards and the other acoustics. In fact, so let's just try a high pass filter. What I like to do a lot of times is I'll take the filters and max them out and then just bring it back until it sounds like the instrument. You know, I, I, I either start from the bottom or the top uh, very often. Yeah, let's check that out in the track. Now it's bouncing around a little bit. It's got just a tiny bit of, of life, uh, too much, a little too much jump. So let's see if we can keep life, but but nonetheless rein it in a little bit. And to me, a diode bridge compressor like a 33609 or a Neve 2254 is kind of one of my favorite tools. Just the attack, the natural attack time and character, the grabby character they have um, just really seems to work for me. Let's just see if that if that's working. Yeah, it's calling it's calling it to attention just a little bit. Now there's one other thing I want to do, is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna there's something that's just a little I'm gonna leave the band in, and I'm gonna cut out a little bit of low mids that I know I'm not gonna want. We're gonna tighten up the cue just a little bit. good now the other thing that we could do if we wanted to built into my template if i if i wanted to is i can bring in a limiter and tickle it just a little bit okay let's start there because we're going to brighten up this i, I don't want to get too bright and glassy on the on the ukulele because on the extreme left and right i'm going to have this acoustic here so let's just kind of, let's mute the ukulele for just a second. Yeah, just way too much low frequency energy. 
So let's cut out everything below like 200. Maybe about 180. But let's let's do a, a general reduction in the, the uh, you know maybe maybe around an octave above that or, or lower. Okay, all right, perfect. Now let's add. Let's kind of see what that that 4K jangle thing does. I don't hate that. Let's put that a little 14K with that. Okay, now let's copy that over because I think these guitars pretty similar. Let's hear that in the track. Cool, now let's hear a section of the song where he's playing a lot heavier handed. Okay, so the, the 4K thing is a little, it's a little, Okay, let, let's let's use that. I'm gonna copy it over. That one's just a little brighter. Okay, let me see if I if that d d diode bridge. Uh, uh, let me stutter less and and and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, try to be a little more clear here. Uh, let's see if the diode bridge things works uh, works for me. I, I like how it really calls it to attention. Let's check that out. Okay, so the thing about a diode bridge, do you hear how the dynamics of the guitar, it still sounds like the guitar, even though you'll see it's like, okay, it's two or three dB of compression. Um, you don't really, you don't really hear it. It just sounds more important and more, it sounds like it has more vitality, more, more life to it. Whereas sometimes you'll see in my template, I have other, you know, quite a bit of other things. Sometimes I'm trying to lock the dynamics of an acoustic guitar right into place. And I don't want them, I don't want them to move. Uh, you shall not pass here. And this is another one of my favorites right here that's built into my template. In fact, let's just put that over here on both of these. And copy that over. There it goes. Okay. Let's hear, let's hear this uh, instead of the diode bridge. Okay, now the diode bridge instead. I I'm torn. I'm going to stick. I think I'm going to stick with diode bridge for now. Yeah, I think that's a good call. So he you hear how the ukulele, we're not trying to hammer that. We want that to sound like he's kind of front, front of the stage playing that thing. So we're going to leave just a little more life and dynamic to that. And so we can hammer these acoustic guitars a little bit, a little bit more, try to keep them locked in. Okay, very good. Now, before we work on this bazooki, let's go up to the, the let's go up to the pad. Okay, I think I'm, I'm just gonna, the, the channel strip two is plenty. Right around, right around there, it's just a little too thick. Let's see if we need to add just a little air. Let's see what that sounds like. You know, we may be able to get by with just a little more top end out of these acoustics when it gets really wide there. Maybe. No, I'm not going to add any more high end to the acoustic. It's going to get start getting brittle. I mean, to the uh, ukulele. Okay, so let's check out the, the reed organ. No, let's put the acoustic piano in first. 
read organ, th the reason is that the organ is just this blur of sound, right? Kind of, kind of dark. Uh, so, so I'm going to be more likely to fit it around other important elements and not worry about it being a primary source. So a lot of times, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll EQ, um, the first, the first things I touch are the more, you know, pri primary important uh, elements. Like in this case, acoustic guitar, ukulele, uh, that that pad, maybe this arp, you know, that kind of a. Th okay, that's a very warm sound. Okay, so what I might want to do is is instead of the SSL channel strip, I may bring up this Neve channel strip. Uh, something about the top end of the Neve. That EQ of the Neve. I mean, that's too much, but that, it's it's that type of shine. Let's just kind of see what's too much. I don't hate that. Let's take a let's take just a little of that out. Thin it out just a touch. And now let's bring in some of that dialed bridge compressor that we have access to. You'll see it's already doing a thing. It's about one dB here. Three to one. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to hear that in the mix. Okay, so now I'm going to mute that and I'm going to try doing it with an SSL. See which one I like better. So some of these notes are spaced out pretty far, so I'm gonna slow the decay time down a little. I'm gonna start with fast attack. Now I'm gonna remove that and go with the 30 second, uh, 30 millisecond regular attack. Okay, now back to back with the Neve. Okay, I'm going to stick with the Neve because I really, I, I just think that's working for this song. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the SSL. And then um, the way I have my template set up, I can just drag and drop a lot of useful tools. So I'm going to drag the Pro Q3 over here and make that active. You'll see it's inactive. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a, a, a shelf, or I'm sorry, a bell in the low mid. Let's widen that out just a little bit. Right there, right around 200. I'm just going to cut that a little bit. Yeah, that's really fitting. Just got just enough of that Neve shine. I may even increase it just a touch. Okay, let's bring in those arps. Okay, let's just kind of hear how they're naturally finding the, their way into the mix. I really like where they're fitting naturally. Uh, it's kind of got a pad built into it, kind of thick. I don't want that. I don't want the arp to get too percussive and too bright. I mean, we can check. So what? Let's put it back in the mix, and let's check and just kind of sweep the frequency range and see where, if we do add some presence, kind of where it finds its way. Right in the mids, right in the mids, or 1K, 2K. Let's find if there we can clear just a little space because we still got other things to bring in. Okay, I, I, 
I am going to add just a touch, just a touch of 10K air. Actually, I'm going to bring it down. Okay, I think we're getting a nice movement out of it now, some nice motion. Okay, these, these moments here just come in uh, for some melodic ideas. So let's start bringing in that organ pad. Okay. Okay, so on a lot of the other things we've dealt with, we tried to keep it sounding like the instrument that it was, and we were kind of light touch here, light touch there, uh, just making it fit the mix better. Um, that's not what I want to do here. I, I want to get pretty drastic. So I'm going to activate this hidden guy right here, the 6050 from a DSP, and we're going to really start making this guy aggressive and find, find his hole in the mix, wherever that hole lies. Let's just turn it until we like it. Okay, so before I add the distortion, I'm going to add a little upper mid. Let's see if, if that's cutting. Yeah. Let's put a little distortion on it. Now I want to cut out a lot of a lot of low end. And it needs some some life, some spread. So there's things that I don't have in my template that I just kind of know. You know, we need to know our tools. And um, uh, let's see, it's called Crystallizer. And I have this preset. Uh, look at that. Josie, it's the only preset I've saved in, in Crystallizer. Check it out. Okay, we're making it a little more otherworldly, and I think that's what it desperately needs. Yeah. Okay, now an another thing that we can do here uh, before we start adding in our... our um, melodic elements because again these guys just kind of happen here at, here and there and they're just uh, you know really short staccato things so I don't think we need to base a lot of other decisions off of those so what I want to do is is I have this parallel bus uh, um, thing right here you see squisher number two I, I have multiple parallels in my template and uh, for vocals instruments that's not drums drums etc and um, I have a couple different things in there, but I'm just going to start with the purple, uh, which is an 1178 type of, uh, of thing. And what I want to do is you'll see that even though that track was muted, all these tracks have been sending to that. And some of these I can remove. Uh, in fact, you'll see the acoustic elements were, but the keys were not. So let's send the piano, the acoustics, and the arp to the parallel but not the reed organ or the pad and to kind of bring it up to taste. Okay. First of all, I'll, I'll have this up so you can kind of see how aggressive it, it, it is or is not being hit. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to mute the, because uh, I have the drums uh, the, the, and bass <laughs> really popping, uh, maybe a little bit too much. And that said, I, I'm going to show you kind of how much energy uh, we're adding or not going to add with this, the parallel compression bus. So we're getting get quite a bit of extra sound or extra volume from that. I like the urgency and how it's really pushing uh, the acoustics to the forefront. OK, 
Okay, so the the bazooki, let's treat him next. So let, let's use let's use like a a kind of a tape compression kind of thing. Let's add that over there and that is not dragging and dropping either. Okay, let's add from here. Maybe it was because it was from uh, Stereo to Mono, or something like that. Okay, let, let's start there. And let's just use the 4K E channel strip for a minute. Okay, probably somewhere in there. Let, let's uh, put it in the mix a little too loud and check it out. Let's get a really good handle on the the kind of the attack and life of it. Okay, I'm gonna drag the the Neo that we're not using, the U17. We're gonna drag that over here and put that on. I kind of like that. Now let's see, you know, because we're gonna have vocals going there. He's actually playing a riff that the vocals are singing. So I'm gonna pan him a little bit to one side so he's a little more, kind of has a spot. I feel like he pops out of the mix a little bit more by panning, panning him away from the center. Still just a little bit too much low end though. Let's take a little more low end. Another thing we can do is the limiter that we've been using uh, or that we used on the ukulele. I, I wonder what it, they, what this would sound like on the, on the bazooki. And there's a little automation on the drum bus and I'm gonna turn that off so I can get this just a little lower for you so you can hear the other elements that we're working on better all right yeah yeah now this this is completely dry some of this will you know obviously change character uh, once we get our, uh, put it in some space. Okay, now let's work on the these guys next. It's a really cool part, but I just don't hear them. They, they, they're too muffled. They, uh, they're talking like uh, mush mouth here. So we're gonna get pretty heavy handed. So when I think about heavy handed on synths, uh, I think of the McDSP 6050. And so I'm gonna do a lot of the similar treatment to what we did this reed organ here. I'm gonna EQ something into it. And um, then I'm gonna you know, let the, the distortion thing kind of really pop it up. There's nothing wrong with that right there. Let's get rid of some bottom end. kind of like that. Let's just copy that setting over. Let's put the two together. Okay, so here's what we had. By themselves, here's what we have now. Now let's put them in the track and because I dialed this in in solo so you can really hear what kind of the, what kind of things I'm looking for, but that doesn't mean it'll be appropriate for the track. I like it. Absolutely, nothing wrong with that at all. I still have the, the channel strips here, so if I wanted to uh, use the filters here or even the compressor, I could. In fact, let's do.
Yeah, that bottom end, we don't need that. We got that, that huge kick drum going, and there's uh, the sub bass. There's the 808 drops. There's all kinds of low end. Okay, now one other thing we can do is we can send these to the parallel distortion and make them e uh, pop even a little harder. Hear that? I mean, that's a pretty pretty radical difference. Let me show you one more time. It's not just volume. It's, it's energy. Check it out. With. It, it's like it enhances the distortion characteristics. Now let's put the vocals in with it. Sounds like a record. Sounds sounds great. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned some things, kind of get a mind, uh, you know, a look into my mindset at least and the tools that I use every day, how I start from a, from a template, some of the tools that are in the template and things like that. And also, um, my friend Chase Scoring, I love this song and I love Chase. And, and I just want to give a shout out not only to him, but all the artists that you see in my videos. Um, um, I get permission from these people to use their tracks uh, in these tutorials and not everyone gives permission they don't want their vocal to be soloed or they don't want their music you know I, I don't I don't know why but these people that do allow it um it, it man give them some love you know follow them on social media let them know you saw them on our channel uh, whatever the case may be play stream one of their songs and let them know <laughs> let them know that you found out about them through our our videos because um I really appreciate them taking, you know, letting us take their songs and I'm open, open them up to you guys for as learning tools. Uh, speaking of YouTube channels, um, this is my own YouTube channel. I know sometimes you see my face and it's been on other people's channels, but um, if you would click below and like and subscribe, man, I would sure appreciate it. Leave some nice comments and let me know what other videos you want. I know we haven't touched electric guitars. There's so many things we haven't touched yet. So many great ideas. But uh, let me know the ones that are most pressing to you, and and uh, we'll see what we can do about it. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and happy mixing.